So many of you have asked how we distinguish period originals like these pieces here from the 1780s from later copies. And so why don't we just go through a basic checklist here, some at-a-glance vetting, which will root out the vast majority of machine-made copies. And so first, little irregularities are the hallmarks of these pre-industrial period pieces, especially from the 18th century. And we're going to see that the entire surfaces of these chairs are shimmering with these irregularities. Whether it is the patina here, the wear, which is logically distributed and comprehensive, little bits of paint here that are worn off from contact with the body, contact with other objects, natural use, such as, for instance, the wear on the armrest, which is natural, where, of course, so many hands have been resting over the centuries. But in addition to these irregularities, we also see that the entire surfaces here are subtly undulated because these pieces of beech wood have been sculpted out by hand. And so up close, we see that there's a vibration, there's a life to the surfaces of a period piece like this. Surfaces which would appear dry and lifeless in comparison on a later machine-made copy. Now, one of the more obscure markers of an 18th century period piece is actually in what was left unfinished, because back in the day, you know, you had to do all of this by hand, so naturally that which would not be looked at would not be completed. And so if we take a look at the frieze of heart spokes here, we notice how the maker did not take it upon himself to continue this frieze around the back of the chair where fewer people would be looking. And then, if we take a look at the fluting of the legs here, which has been sculpted with foliage, we notice the back hidden flutes on the front legs and the least visible flutes on the back legs have not been sculpted with foliage. Now this makes sense, back when you'd have to do all of that by hand, why sculpt all 32 flutes per chair when you could achieve the same effect, basically, by only carving 20. Now, one of the more obvious things to check for on French period chairs is period correct joinery, such as the presence of these dowels here that are peeking through the paint. And while we're looking at the dowels, we often check to make sure that the scrolls of the armrests on these period pieces are slightly irregular as well, as they should have been sculpted out by hand with a master furniture maker's chisel. Each one of them was, and we can see reassuringly at a glance that each one of the scrolls on the armrests is in fact slightly different. And so if we continue around to the backs of the chairs, we're going to notice more apparent doweling as well. And then we see back here that the assembly joints are vertical. Later copies are often associated with having diagonal or horizontal assembly joints. So finally, and most critically, if we look beneath the chair, we're going to carefully take a look at the oxidized inner belt of this piece. Oxidized, to be straightforward here, we just mean that it looks 250 years old. But we see also that the chair presents obvious irregular hand saw marks, where of course they wouldn't be and the inner belt would just be smooth on a much later machine made copy. Now it also appears that I have imported a few egg sacs here, which should be yielding some very aristocratic French spiders very soon. But then we notice the presence of different tack holes and different tacks from the various upholstery jobs that a chair of this age likely would have had. That's something pretty critical to look for, and this is a quintessential example of what we want to see here on this chair. And on this one, we even see the presence of a little tack here, which at one point would have held, let's say, an inventory label, or perhaps even the maker's label of these chairs. All right, so even though this vetting, as you can see, is fairly basic, it's also very logical, and it's a key framework which I hope will help you apprehend some of the pieces that you come across. Now, none of this wear really detracts from the value of the piece. In fact, it's just a natural part of it. And also one final tip, as we're contributing to the wear here at the tops of the backs, this wear is actually associated with how the chairs would not only be touched here, but, but tilted backwards and displaced around a room. And so why don't we take a look at the corresponding wear here at the bottom of the legs here, where they should be rounded in, rounded down on these as they've been pulled around a floor. This is just one of the first places that we look for wear that's congruent with a chair that's been around this long. Anyway, I thank you all for watching, and I do hope that this video will help inform your own collecting, if not increase your appreciation for furniture from the past, perhaps your ability to recognize these rare period pieces which have seen several lifetimes. Mm -hmm.